All right, everybody, I wanted to bring you a story out of Zero Hedge. I'm going to link the article below, and I'm going to run through it really fast. I want you to read through it. I think it's extremely important. Uh, we're going to be talking about SWIFT integrating with the new uh, Chinese central bank digital currency. It is pretty amazing that they've actually I, – I never thought this would have happened. I thought SWIFT would have fought them like crazy, but I guess if you can't beat them, join them. It's one of those situations. So we're going to read through this really quick. Um, for those that you that don't know, China launched – was the first to launch its central bank digital currency. It uh, has the timeline right here below, uh, talking about all the different um, uh, time points in which they uh, planned on hitting. They hit them all. Um, I want to make sure you understand this too, and this is really cool because they actually give a, a little historical background back in October when they had a lottery. Uh, and they announced that a certain amount of people would receive up to X amount of uh, digital yuan in their new digital wallet. And so I believe 2 million people signed up. It says right here, nearly 2, me 2 million people applied and 50,000 people actually won. And what they had to do is they had to, the winners were required to download a digital renminbi app and receive their red packet, which was worth about $30. Okay, so not a ton of money, but as you can see, the masses sign up for free things, right? Um, so, uh, What's interesting too, and I want you to realize that um, the way this was set up, the way they wrote the law in China was that the, the CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency, was not going to replace the digital yuan or the regular yuan, okay? Um, the renminbi. I want you to realize that that is all part of the plan of every central government and central bank, okay? They always tell you that. It's just like when they came out with I, the IRS what I believe it was in 1913, and they said, oh, it's we're just gonna tax the rich. And so you define what rich is, and you go, well, the rich back then were, you know, um, anyone that makes over $10,000. And uh, let's just say uh, today's purposes, just like actually they're coming out with laws right now. They say, hey, we're not gonna, the wealth tax in California is only gonna be for the people that, you know, make over a million dollars a year. And because they know that by and large, the, mo the average person in California does not make that much. They go, cool, yeah, tax those people, and then I can get more free stuff. And what they do is they go, well, now we see that it's uh, anybody that makes over 900000 because they can look at the demographics and they go, to all those people are going, well, well, I don't make nine hundred grand, so yeah, tax them. And then finally they get down to you. Well, the same thing with the IRS when they, um, they came out and said it's only for the rich. Well, guess what? We still have, to this day, a 0% tax bracket, and everybody... Uh, it has that tax bracket in their uh, tax return, and that's um, well changed with the new uh, tax cuts a few years ago that are awesome. Um, but it was the first ten thousand dollars you make, you pay zero tax on it. So they've kept their promise, right? We only we only uh, tax the rich, and if you look at how many people in this country make literally under ten thousand dollars, the percentage of people are it's staggering. Um, and I think the new tax plan uh, that happened a couple of years ago under a totally different admin, uh, doubled that. I think a married couple, it was your 0% your, your tax bracket bumped up to like, I think 18,000, but it's been a while since I read those books, sorry. All right, so anyway, uh, going back to this, they wanna make sure that you know, oh, this is not gonna replace your currencies. Like when, when we come out with ours, they're gonna do the same thing. Oh, this is not intended to replace but if you want some free money, uh, it's called Stimulus. Uh, all you got to do is download this app, and it's going to be awesome. And we're just going to zap it on there. And, and everyone's going to do it. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to do it too, right? Because I'm going to go take it, and I'm going to go buy something really cool like ah, silver or Bitcoin. Um, but that's the whole plan. So you need to see this. As you read through these things, you start to see their plans, and it makes sense. So down here, I just want to, we're gonna go over just this one real paragraph. So it says, still there was one, one thing missing, a stamp of approval by the gatekeeper of not only the global payment system, but the um, protector of the dollar reserve system, SWIFT. But as of this morning, China has that too. So they were literally able to get SWIFT to sign off on this. Um, Cause like I said, it's probably one of those, if you can't beat them, join them kind of things. It says SWIFT, the global system for financial messaging. That's all it is, is a messaging app, right? It talks from one bank to the next and says, hey, just so you know, you got 10,000 bucks coming uh, from this bank. And you go, okay, cool, so I better expect it. Um, and Cross Border Payments has set up a joint venture with the Chinese Central Bank's Digital Currency Research Institution and Clearing Center in a sign that China's exploring global use of its planned digital yuan. And again, we wanna make emphasize that. 
China doesn't have to get Swift system. They actually have a, a system that's faster and cheaper called SIPS that they uh, set up with Russia. Um, I believe in 2014 is when they started that. But this is a sign here that Swift is going to, I have a feeling Swift's gonna go, crap, the, the jig is up. Let's just say, hey, if you want, we'll give you your stamp of, our stamp of approval. And then they still have a way of knowing where this money's going because it's not on a blockchain. Okay, I wanna make sure that's very clear. Central bank digital currencies do not sit on a blockchain. Now, if somebody, let's say, was to force their hand and say, you have to run them on a blockchain, and uh, that person uh, would be like, let's say, someone who's in charge of a country. Um, I don't wanna to say too much because you know how it goes now. Um, but uh, I have a feeling that's what's happening in the background. I think that's why you're seeing so much issues with XRP. Anyway, I want to get this to you. This, I think, is an amazing read. I think you're going to get a lot out of it. Um, and we'll talk to you guys later.